Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to get practice with impedance. Um, the last two sections I spent quite a bit of time talking about impedance um, because I really wanted you to get an idea for what it means and where it comes from and the voltage current relationship and all of that stuff. But to be 100% honest with you, a lot of what I talked about before is really great background material and really important to enrich your understanding. But honestly, all you really need to know is how to take your inductors and convert those to impedances and use them in circuit analysis, and to take those capacitors, convert them to impedances, and use them in circuit analysis. So what we're going to do is get some practice with that here um, to kind of reinforce those, those essential ideas. So if I have an inductor, just a single inductor, not even I'm going to draw the rest of the circuit. Let's say it's 75 millihenries. That's the value of this inductance. And let's say that um, there is a voltage drop across in this direction, and there's a current that goes this direction. So that kind of makes sense. Current goes this way, voltage drop that way. Uh, and by the way, when I say that there is a current and a voltage, uh, if we're doing AC analysis, we're assuming that there's some sinusoidal oscillating nature. We're still drawing it as if the current's flowing one way and the voltage drop is one way, but we then know that everything's really oscillating back and forth all the time at whatever the frequency is. So we're given in this case, we're given that I of T is equal to 4 times the cosine of 40,000 T minus 38 degrees, and that's milliamps. So that's what we're given. So what we want to know, so that's kind of the problem statement. All right. So let's do part A. What is the impedance of the inductor? We write that as Z sub L. What's the impedance? That's the first thing. We need to represent it as an impedance, and then we can do calculations based on that. So we know that the impedance of any inductor is J times omega times L. So we just say J times omega. Omega is given right here because we know that the driving source is going to govern the frequency for everything in this circuit, uh, in the circuits that we're studying. So 40,000 radians per second. 40,000 radians per second. That's J omega times L, which is the inductance of 75 millihenries. Now you can't just put 75 here. You have to deal with Henry. So you need to go ahead and convert that by doing 75 times 10 to the minus 3. So Z sub L, then, when you multiply these two things together, you're just going to get J times 3,000. And the units of impedance are just like the units of resistance. That's easy to remember. You just use ohms. So this is the answer. And you can see that since it's an inductor, it's just pure imaginary positive J with a number. And as we talked about in the last section, we expect all inductors to be positive J impedances. And we expect all capacitors to be negative J impedances. And I drew a bunch of pictures to show you kind of why that's the case. But this follows exactly with what we expect. So part B then might ask you, what is the reactance of this inductor? All right. Now you don't really even need to calculate it again because the reactance is really just taking the impedance and stripping away the J. So it's 3,000 and you can use the same unit of ohms. So you see the difference between the concept of reactance and impedance is really no difference. Impedance is the whole enchilada. You have the imaginary number in there. That's what we're going to use in our calculations. Reactance is still giving you the same information. It's telling you how much resistance this thing has, but it's just stripping away the imaginary number and just saying, here's the, here's the number, uh, basically. We, we have a name for that, and we call it reactance. That's basically all it is. All right, so then the next thing might say, for part C, 